Hi, and welcome to this Anchor Shroom Masterclass on how to make bread. I first wanna introduce you to the Anchor Shroom Assistant Original, made in Sweden and of the highest quality. This machine was first introduced in 1940. This is one of the most amazing stand mixers on the market today, and there are a few things that set it apart from every other stand mixer out there. First, I wanna talk about the fact that the motor and the transmission is in the bottom of the machine. So instead of having a motor that comes up over the top and makes your machine top heavy, everything is in the bottom, making it very stable and very, very sturdy. And they're tested before they leave the factory in Sweden. The Anchor Shroom Assistant comes with a seven year warranty on the motor assembly, which includes the motor and the gearbox inside of the machine. For the basic package that you get with the Anchor Shroom, you're going to get this amazing seven liter or eight quart stainless steel bowl. You're gonna get two different mixing options and mixing tools to use in the stainless steel bowl. You're gonna get the roller and the scraper, and you're also again going to get a dough hook. I'll show you how to use both of those in just a few minutes. You're also going to get this Triton plastic double whisk bowl system that includes two different sets of beaters, a set of multi-wire balloon whisks, as well as single wire cake beaters. You're also gonna get a recipe book with lots of beautiful photographs and fantastic recipes. We're actually gonna mix up the focaccia bread found in the recipe book. Uh, we also add recipes every single day to ankashroom.com. And whatever country you live in, you can go to that site and find recipes um, available to you. So let me first show you how to use the dough hook. In this video today, I'm going to be using the roller and scraper. It's actually my preferred method of mixing cakes, cookies, bread dough, whatever I'm making. And the roller and scraper is actually original to the Anchor Room in 1940. This is what the machine came with. So I'm gonna show you how the dough hook fits. We're going to pull up on this pen. The arm is spring loaded. I'll show you why that's so important here in a minute. We're gonna remove the dough roller. The scraper stays and the dough hook is going to slide in. You're gonna swing the arm over the center. You're gonna push the pin down into this bracket here on the dough hook and you're gonna position the dough hook about in the middle of the bowl and you're gonna tighten your tension knob in the back to tighten the arm into place. And this is gonna hold the dough hook in place so that while you're mixing, the bowl is actually what turns on the anchor shroom. And so your ingredients are going to move around um, the dough hook and knead that way. Now I talked about how the roller and the scraper are original to this machine since 1940 and they are my preferred method of mixing cakes cookies and bread dough. One of the great features of the roller and scraper and the stainless steel bowl on the Anchor Shroom is that they don't care if it's a small batch, a large batch, a stiff dough, or a super high hydration dough. They do a fantastic job of kneading no matter what you're putting into the Anchor Shroom. Another great feature of the Anchor Shroom is that you can do a small batch of bread dough. I've done a single recipe pizza crust all the way up to five kilograms of bread dough at one time. So lots and lots of options with the Anchor Shroom. You've got two knobs on the front of the machine. Your knob on the left is your on off as well as your 12 minute timer or up to 12 minute timer. So with a single click, we just have continuous on and it will stay on until you turn it off. If you continue turning the knob, you will engage the timer. You'll set the timer for however many minutes your, your recipe calls for mixing, whipping, or kneading. And then when the timer runs out, the machine turns off. If you need to at any point turn the machine off and the timer's still running, not a problem. Just turn it to off. You're not gonna hurt the timer by forcing it to off. Then your other knob is your speed control knob. Now, one thing about the Anchor Shroom is that it has a variable speed motor, so you're not stuck with speeds one, two, three, or four. Most of your bread kneading is gonna be done on these lower speeds, 
because that's how the this machine works. You don't need to run it on super high to get an effective knead on your bread dough. So we are gonna start with our liquids. The Ankish Room really does best when you start with your liquid. So I'm gonna start with some warm water. Anytime you're making a yeast dough or a recipe that calls for yeast, yeast really likes warm. So I like to start with warm water and then I'm gonna add my olive oil. Now let's talk about yeast for just a second. There are lots of different types of yeast out there. There are sourdough starters that have naturally occurring yeast. There's dry yeast and there's also fresh yeast. No matter what kind of yeast you use, if you use fresh yeast, you wanna put it in with the liquids, mix it together, let it sit, let it get bubbly, make sure that it's alive and it's fresh. Um, and then you're gonna continue on with the rest of your recipe. If you use a dry active, like what I use, you're actually going to add the yeast in about halfway through adding your flour. So no matter which way you go, this is one trick to remember though, yeast and salt do not particularly like each other and they don't like to go into a recipe at the same time. The salt can actually inhibit the yeast from doing its thing. So I like to always add them at opposite ends of the recipe. So because I'm using a dry active yeast that I'm gonna put in with the flour, I'm gonna go ahead and put my salt in here with my, my, with my liquids, make sure it gets good and dissolved. Um, and that way I don't have any chunks of salt mixing around in my dough. And so I'm gonna put that here. We're gonna get the machine running on the lowest speed as we start to add our flour. And then about halfway through adding our flour, we're gonna add our yeast and then we're gonna keep adding our flour. A lot of times you can actually get away with using a little less flour than what the recipe calls for. And that's gonna result in a very, very soft dough. So let's get mixing. We're gonna start off, like I said, on the lowest speed. We're gonna just click. Once I get all my ingredients in and I've adjusted my arm and my roller for my dough, that's when I'm gonna set my timer for kneading. So let's start. I always advocate that you pre-measure and pre-weigh your ingredients. One, to make sure that you have everything you need for the recipe before you start. And it just helps to prevent mistakes. So now that our dough is coming together, I'm gonna sprinkle in my dry active yeast. If any ingredients get stuck in the middle of the bowl, you can just push on the arm and the roller pick up any ingredients as they hang out in the middle. We can now turn our speed up slightly. And what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for this dough to come together, to thicken up. And we're gonna adjust our arm and our roller accordingly. So you can see that our dough is starting to come together. It's looking a little shaggy. We don't want the roller to be squishing the dough up the side of the bowl. So at this point, I'm gonna adjust my arm and my roller slightly off the side. I'm gonna tighten my knob here at the back. This is going to prevent my roller from working its way back to the side. However, the unique design of the anchor Shroom allows for the arm and the roller to still be able to freely move to the center so that the scraper is scraping the side of the bowl the arm and the roller are gently moving with the dough and it's totally mimicking that hand kneading motion that our grandmothers or our great grandmothers used to do on the counter or in a big bread bowl. So that's how that works. We're gonna add the rest of our flour in. We're gonna adjust our speed now the biggest learning curve with the anchor Shroom is knowing where to position the arm and the roller for your particular recipe. I can't tell you a definitive spot to set it in because it's totally dependent on the hydration level of your dough or the volume of dough that you're doing. Obviously a smaller batch, you're gonna leave the arm and the roller closer to the side of the bowl. Whereas a larger batch of dough you may adjust the arm and the roller further away from the side. But here's what you're looking for. You want it close enough 
that it's applying gentle pressure on the dough as it passes between the roller and the side of the bowl because that's how it's kneading the dough. But you don't want it so close that the dough is really making the arm move a lot back and forth. So we're gonna adjust it so that it's close enough to the side that it's putting gentle pressure on the dough, but far enough away that that dough isn't violently moving the arm back and forth. All right, we're gonna turn this up to about a three o'clock speed. We're gonna set our timer to knead for about eight minutes. So now we're gonna uncover the bowl. We've been letting our dough sit here and rise on set, and I'm gonna show you now what the risen dough looks like. So there is our dough inside of the bowl. You can see that it's nice and smooth and shiny on top, very different than how it looked um, in the very beginning. You know that your yeast is active and that it's risen when you can push on it and it's kind of like a memory foam mattress and it fills back in where your fingerprints are. So I told you that the focaccia recipe that we're making is found in the recipe book. Um, so now we're gonna get our pan that we're going to put our focaccia on. We're gonna start with a little bit of olive oil onto the pan here, and we're just gonna drizzle this back and forth. You could certainly use um, a brush if you wanted to spread this out evenly, but drizzling it is really super easy. Now we're gonna take the dough and using our spatula, we're gonna scrape this out of the bowl and right onto the pan with our olive oil. One of the great things about focaccia is that you don't have to handle it a lot. Super, super easy. We're just going to use a little bit of flour on the surface and on our fingers. And we're just gonna kind of squish this out onto our pan. So once we get this shaped on our pan, we're then gonna let this rise just on the counter for a little bit. And once it's risen, I've got another one all ready to go. So we're gonna bring it in. You can see how puffed up this one is. So now this is the fun part and this is where kids really like to help. We are going to create indentions with our fingers. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Then we're gonna just Sprinkle on some tomatoes. In our fresh rosemary sprigs. And now what you kind of want to do is you want to kind of gently press them into the dough. Now we're going to drizzle with a little bit more olive oil. And then we're gonna sprinkle with some flake sea salt. And then no more rise time for this. So now this is gonna go into our preheated oven. It's gonna bake for 25 minutes. Um, and we will be right back when this is done to show you the finished product. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you can see, our focaccia bread is golden brown and hot out of the oven. I hope this video has helped you. I hope you see how easy it is to use the anchor shroom and baking is a lot more fun when it's easy. The anchor shroom assistant is called the assistant for a reason. There are so many optional attachments that you can put with this machine, such as a meat mincer, a blender, and even pasta making attachments. We will be showing you those attachments in other videos, but today I hope you've seen how enjoyable it is to use the Anka Shroom and how easy it is to make your own fresh bread. 
And if you love to bake, then you need to make the Anchor Shroom your kitchen assistant. Have a great day, enjoy.